In the year 2021, there was a catastrophic nuclear war that ended all life on Earth. However, Marianopolis was the only community that escaped to the unknown space. Living in the USS Enterprise since then, they have developed a space colony of scientists that are dedicated to re-inhabiting the world. With 2,000 space cadets working alongside 150 commanders, a private intergalactic space school situated in the Westmount Galaxy has been established. With over 100 cadet-run clubs and a new Sportitude program, each cadet excels to his or her full potential. Commander, we have a problem. We just received a signal from a system on Earth that has been inactive for 20 years. Sensor 12 just picked up movement from coordinate 45 West. This may be our only chance, Commander. We need to act fast. We know, but we have to do. Alright, cadets. For the past 20 years, you've had the mission to rid the Earth of the harmful chemicals that were released in the War of 2021. Today, we're one step closer. We have detected movement in Zone 3 for the past few days. Now we need to go down and explore to find out what we're up against. We need volunteers. Ooh, 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 pick me, pick me, pick me. I can do this. I volunteer as tribute. Pick me, pick me, pick I me. I guess I'll do it. We'll hold interviews seeing as there's so many interested. We will take only the bravest, most dedicated cadets. You will have to build a space pod and be ready to explore the Earth. Now go back to your rest pods and be ready for tomorrow. Hello everyone, and thank you for all your hard work. This wouldn't have been possible without you. The space pod is now ready for launch, and we're going to be docking and ascending down to Earth today. Yay! Unfortunately, our uniforms are still in the textile department, so we'll just be wearing the school uniforms. So pack your bag and say goodbye to your mommies and daddies, and may, may the, the force, force be with you. We are four light years away from Earth. Our voyage is soon coming to an end, but our journey has just begun. Dr. Nefario is here to explain what's going on on Earth right now. Hello, cadets. I would just like to say how proud I am of each and every one of you. You have given up so much to help further my research. Maybe even your lives. This is what we know about Earth. Il y a six tours génératrices, trois de chaque côté de ce qu'était Montréal. Chacune d'elles contrôle un aspect important de la nature sur Terre. La plus haute a le pouvoir d'éliminer toute radiation sur Terre, la plus petite tour a le pouvoir de filtrer l'air, et la tour de taille moyenne permet de nettoyer l'eau. Afin de restaurer la vie sur Terre, nous devons activer chacune des tours en les alimentant de sphères d'énergie. Chacune des tours produit une différente quantité d'énergie pour alimenter la centrale énergétique lorsqu'elles sont alimentées d'une des 32 sphères d'énergie éparpillées dans la ville de Montréal. La plus haute tour fournit 40 kW par sphère, la tour moyenne fournit 20 kW par sphère et la petite tour en fournit 10. Si deux tours du même côté sont actives en même temps, la puissance totale est double. Si les trois tours du même côté sont tous actives, la puissance est cette fois quintuplée. Our goal is to activate a maximum of five power towers, seeing as the wattage provided by six would explode the earth. But how will we activate the towers so the wattage can be delivered to the main power station? Well, that's the thing. Each power tower is activated by a different switch found in a different part of what used to be Montreal. For example, for the radiation tower, the lever switch is located in what used to be Westmount, and we have to find each and every one of them. Does everyone understand? Yeah! Yes. Good, we will be arriving soon, so buckle up and, and brace, brace yourselves! yourselves. <laughs> But first, let me take a selfie. Whoa, it's so cold. I would have never thought it was winter. Fellow cadets, I think there's radiation. Look at my beautiful chocolate skin. Mm. Let's go back mm. in the space pod. I knew that this would happen. That's why I had the cadets make a robot that has a pickup system in the front, which delivers balls to the storage area. Using a secondary conveyor system made out of aluminum axles and stretched elastics, the balls are brought to a shooter made of two spinning wheels. The shooter will deliver the power balls to the power towers. The frame is made out of aluminum T-slot extrusions, and the robot uses Bainbot, window lift, and Makita drills to power all the parts. 